Welcome, folks, to another edition of Clubhouse Picks brought to you by Godzilla Wins. I am your host, Jack Fredericks, editor of GodzillaWins.com, where you can get all of your sports picks and predictions on everything from the NBA to the UFC. Clubhouse Picks is your go-to podcast for PGA predictions, tournament previews, and salty picks for the veteran golf fan. It is a lovely Wednesday evening in Mississippi here on May 17th, and we're here to give you our picks and predictions for the PGA Championship. I'm here with my co-host, as always, Nate Perry, the greatest handicappy caddy west of the Rockies. And we also want to welcome our special guest, Elizabeth Diane Veith. Elizabeth is not your average golf influencer. She balances her golf addiction with a career in the financial industry. She truly believes that golf can save lives and support multiple organizations that help alleviate the mental health issues that these heroes battle. Elizabeth loves to share her travel and checking off the top 100 golf courses. She wants to inspire more people to experience the joys of golf and travel while balancing a full-time job and a budget. She currently resides in Denver, Colorado. Her other hobbies include hunting, exploring new places, cheering on the Colorado Avalanche, and staying active. Welcome, Elizabeth. Welcome, Nate. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. So we want to talk very quickly, I guess, to open the show. Um, just kind of a recap here of the AT&T Byron Nelson. Um, and one thing that I really kind of want to harp on, and we'll start with Elizabeth, is, you know, Jason Day's win here. I don't think super surprising. He was like 14 to one. He looks super comfortable on Sunday. He beats um, like a, a kind of a weak field, but he's been trending upward the last couple months. He's been playing terrific golf. So the question here then after this AT&T win, which I think is a big win for him after all the injuries, um, is Jason Day back for good? Can we expect more wins this year? Yeah, I think so. I think that he is back and especially the way that his game has been trending. It has been awesome to see him back in the winner's circle because um, it's been a while for sure. So I, I do think that he'll have another win this year. Nate, how impressed were you with this win? Uh, super impressed. I mean, you know, staring down Scotty Scheffler is playing some of the best golf in the world. You know, if anybody now named John Romney is playing the best golf in the world. Uh, I mean, it was super impressive. I texted you on what, like the 10th hole and was like, Jason Day wins. He looks so comfortable out there. He looked so, it looks so easy for him. There was never a doubt in my mind once they made the turn that he was going to win. He just looked like he belonged there. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't see any reason why he wouldn't. I mean, there's no there's no weak spots right now. I mean, he's in the top 30 in every strokes gain category. Uh, you know, he's just unbelievable at everything right now. So in terms of that, like, yeah, of course he can win. It's always, it's never about the skills with Jason day. It's always, can he stay healthy? Like, can the vertigo thing, like, you know, you know, incapacitate him for a while, like it has in the past was well, back hold up all of those things it's always been physical issues. Uh, but I mean, just, golf wise you know in a vacuum yeah he's playing like a multiple winner for sure yeah i think so too i mean that so at byron nelson which definitely a tune-up course for the pga uh not a course that was super grueling we predicted you know maybe 22 under would win ended up being 23 under jason day shot nine under in the fourth round of the top 10 top 15 only ct pan um shot nine under Everybody else kind of struggled. That's what Jason Day does. The good ones close. And the strokes gains numbers are just incredible. Plus 2.74 T to green, uh, plus 1.59 on strokes gains approached for the whole tournament. Um, the putting was, he was plus in the putting, plus off the tee. I mean, he just, he looked like the Jason Day of old. And I think that he definitely is one who we should be considering just in general, uh, for future tournaments. I don't know if I love him here at the PGA because one, and we'll get on this, it's a long course and it's just hard to win back-to-backs. Um, and then of course his odds are going to plummet. I mean, God, I would have loved to get him like two months ago when he's probably like a hundred to one. I'm not sure right now. Um, I love him in this spot, but I love seeing that. Um, is there, I'll open this up to, to either of y'all. Is there any, is it, is the injuries the only thing that we're worried about? Is there any part of his game um, that gives pause? 
not right now not from a golf perspective i mean i I think it's just all injuries i mean there's no there's no stat that i look at and go like this is this is worrying i mean everything is just good um so and, and if anything i think that there are certain things that can get better uh, you know, the, he's always been a great putter before his injuries and stuff. That's not a flash in the pan. That's not like a fluke statistic. He's consistently been a great putter. So, you know, if you're looking at things like that, saying like, oh, the putter will cool down and then he'll not be as, as dominant. I don't think that's like a good angle. Everything just looks strong to me. I mean, I don't I don't see it since he since he sort of went his own way with his golf swing and sort of retooled some stuff a couple of years ago. Um, he's sort of been building towards this. And I think now he's there. So. Yeah, I totally agree. I don't think there's one stat that you could point to um, and say, hey, this like ha- absolutely has to be improved. I think it's just him staying healthy and um, really making sure that his mental state is in a good one, especially dealing with those injuries. Elizabeth, is there like what does this do to the game of golf if Jason Day is able to return to form? I mean, does this make him a, a top 10 golfer on the PGA Tour? If We kind of just put the live guys aside. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think it does. I think he would be right up there with everybody else that's in the top 10 current state. Um, and if he's consistent, if he gets another win, I, I for sure think he's up there. Is he number one? No, but he would definitely be in the top 10. Yeah, I think so too. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Data Golf has him in the top 10 right now. Like they in, really? their, in their rankings, yeah. Which is sort of weighted more towards uh, like strokes gain data and, and recency. He's top 10 for them. So yeah. Yeah. And the recency is what's, I mean, that's, what's killer. Like this to me, like uh, Elizabeth, we, we swung and missed on um, the AT&T. We didn't pick day, but it, it looks so obvious. I don't, I mean, the only reason I think I stayed away from it, one, the short odds, we don't usually recommend those short odds, but then, you know, the other thing is just KH Lee had won twice in a row. So it was, it was hard not to at least give him kind of his due at that course and at that tournament. But it just, I mean, when he won, it was like, oh, no brainer. Like if you've been following golf, like we do, he was going to get a win. I mean, we've been talking about that forever, just playing so much better. Um, so I am excited to watch him play in the um, PGA. Before we move on, because I want to talk a little bit about Justin Thomas too, our defending champ. I want to thank Birch Gold for partnering with us and making this show possible. Inflation has consequences as the Fed raises interest rates to combat out-of-control government spending. Long-term bonds have diminished in value, crippling the banks. Depositors are holding their breath, and investors are bailing on bank stocks. Diversification has never been more important. The recent surge in gold prices is directly tied to the extreme market volatility right now. This is why gold has historically been a great hedge against the stock market and against inflation. Now would be a great time to diversify gold with the Birch Gold Group. Birch Gold makes it easy to convert an IRA or 401k into an IRA in precious metals. Here's what you need to do. Text Godzilla to 989898. That's Godzilla to 989898 to get a free info kit on gold. They'll help you convert your existing IRA or 401k that's tied to a volatile market into a, an IRA in physical precious metals, gold and silver. And the best part is it is tax sheltered. Again, that's text, not, text Godzilla to 989898. That's Godzilla to 989898 and claim your free info kit on gold today. All right, so let's, um, let's move on here and talk a little bit about Justin Thomas, who I'm interested to get both of y'all's thoughts on. Defending champ had some, we would say, maybe mercurial results as of late, mm-hmm. uh, but he loves the PGA Championship. Um, what, Elizabeth, what are your, what do you think about Justin Thomas's odds or shot um, at this tournament in on this course? Yeah, on this course, I, I don't know that I would pick him to, you know, go back to back and defend it just because of where his game's at. Um, and, and we'll talk about the course, you know, in regards to what they've done and the changes and, you know, here soon. But I, I would not pick him to go back to back, unfortunately. I'm, I'm a JT fan, and I would say that it's not going to happen. Nate. Yeah. You- any interest in JT here? You know, his odds has, have dropped a little bit, so that reflects uh, Elizabeth's skepticism. No, I'm sort of like Elizabeth. I, I just don't see it um, this week. I mean, he's a defending champion, but, like, he shouldn't have won last year. Like, he was eight strokes back at one point in the final round, and everyone in front of him on the leaderboard just 
completely cratered, including Mito Pereira at the very end um, on the last hole when he double bogeyed. So, like, I don't, I, I just don't see it um, just from the perspective of, like, it wasn't like he had, like, a dominant PGA last time around and, you know, throttled the field. He was sort of fortunate that he got a lot of help from the top of the leaderboard. And he caught, like, the world's hottest putter for, like, two days. So, I don't anticipate, I mean, putting stats are always sort of, you know, to, to use the buzzword mercurial. Um, but he's like 138th in strokes game putting right now. So the expectation that he's just going to like find it for four days in a major um, to put together with all the rest of his ball striking stats, which are pretty good, just doesn't feel likely to me, uh, particularly given how well like other guys towards the top of the odds boards like are playing, like current results are playing. Um, I think that Justin Thomas is is a fair price at 30 to one. And I don't really have any interest in, in, in that. I'd rather take somebody who's been playing a little bit better golf um, than, than JT to be quite honest. The putting is a huge problem for him. Um, he, you know, he's, he's still 16th in total strokes gained and off the tee isn't as bad as I kind of thought it was. Um, but you know, as far as like, to me, you know, total driving, which is not a stroke gain stat, but it's still, I think an important stat in something like this, where I do think you have to bomb it a little bit. I know we might, we're going to get into that because I'm not sure Nate agrees with me completely, but you know, he's, um, his total driving isn't awesome and it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, I just think the putting is, is a huge problem here and he just hasn't really put the, put his entire game together in order to, um, make this a play that I'd be interested in um, at 30 to one, which are fairly short odds, although they're long for him because he hovers around about 22 to one when he's playing well and, you know, he can win a major. We've seen him do that, but you're right, Nate. I mean, last year, and we could talk, let's talk a little bit about uh, last year um, because it did feel kind of like a fluke. I mean, you came charging out of nowhere on Saturday and Sunday um, and then had uh, a couple guys fall apart. So I'm not sure that that's the greatest analog. Elizabeth, I don't know um, how you feel about that. Yeah, I, I feel like it's sheer luck, unfortunately. And like I said, I'm a JT fan. So um, I absolutely love to see him win. But I, I just feel like the stars were aligning for him to have that happen just based on, as you mentioned, his putter getting hot, um, guys falling apart. And uh, unfortunately, I think he's got to come out on this course and have the consistency be there across the board um, every single round. And I don't know that that's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. This is, I mean, I didn't even, I didn't even look at him. You know what I mean? Like when I go through some of this stuff, I might look at 10 or 15 dudes, 30 to one, who I, I at least kind of look at their statistics or see if there's a comp or something that I like. And he, I mean, I just immediately was like, mm. You know, which probably means he's going to win. Um, yeah, and- I was just going to say we probably just <laughs> yeah. just jinxed him. Yeah, or probably going to win by yeah by about six strokes. It'll be over by the ninth hole, and I'll be playing this back, thinking yet another stupid take, um, which we're full of on this show. Um, I have something else I kind of want to weasel into our discussion here before we get to the course preview. The live guys. Um, I didn't really know how to, I don't think I have this on the show sheet. I don't really know how to frame this. Um, and we can start uh, with Elizabeth here. Do you, do you trust any of the live guys in this major? I mean, they played well at the masters, but they, none of them won. And um, we talked about this a couple weeks ago that one of the reasons we feel like maybe they didn't win is because they don't play four rounds anymore. And the Sunday exhaustion seems to be real for some of them. None of them played well on Sunday at the masters. Um, do you have any live guys you, you like, are you concerned about their uh, conditioning um, or no? Yeah. So I, I do have a live guy that I like that's Brooks Kepka. Um, and it is because he approaches majors completely differently from a mindset standpoint. Um, don't think the masters was, you know, his best showing this past year. It was really rough to watch. And I do think that he's going to come in full swinging from just a, a mindset standpoint. Um, the stamina piece, I think, is a concern for everybody except Brooks from a live standpoint, 
just because they don't have that mental switch that flips on when it's a major. Um, a lot of the guys have talked about it, but I really feel like Brooks has got it locked in where he's doing things completely different on majors. I mean, I've even heard him say he's putting his phone away. He's not on social media. He's, um, you know, really only eating meals with Jenna and that's about it. Um, so he's approaching it completely differently. So I think he's got the stamina from a mental and a physical standpoint to get there. All the other live guys, I would be concerned if I were them. Or Jenna. I'm not sure I'd love <laughs> eating every single meal with Brooks when he doesn't have his phone. Um, right. But I suppose, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, look, the he played well in the Masters for the first three days that he fell apart kind of on, on Saturday, Sunday. Um, Mentality-wise, I don't know. I mean, I got... I'll, I'll save my one live pick because I think he's kind of got the mentality. Nate, um, any, you got some live love? You ready for Phil yeah. to do it again? I mean, you know, I mean, we talked about this in the Masters. Like, I'm still, like, can't find a way to, like, bet them just because I don't feel like I have good enough stats ever on them. Um, I don't have any stats. Like, that's the thing. Like, they don't have any strokes gain data. Like, everything that you're kind of gleaning from them is, like, old school stats that we don't really use for handicapping anymore. Or it's just like DJ figured it out with his driver or whatever, and he's healthy. So bet on Dustin Johnson now. Um, but there's nothing like hard that I can point to. It's just like sort of anecdotal. So from a like betting perspective, like I'd rather stick with sort of like more known commodities that I sort of can feel a little bit more predictive. And there's a part of me that also thinks that maybe the whole world's sort of reacting like too much off of the masters. Like that the odds now like are sort of like too low on some of these guys. Like Brooks at 22 to one just doesn't like, it still feels like he should be around 30. Dustin Johnson's 30. Cam Smith is 35 to one. He wasn't really been anywhere, but he was like kind of towards the top of the leaderboard in the live event last week. Um, but like the masters is like the most predictive tournament on the schedule every year. It's just the same guys play well yeah. every year at the masters. So in terms of being like, Oh, see, the live guys still got it. It was just the live guys that normally play well at the Masters played well at the Masters. Phil, Brooks, like, they're all guys Patrick that are there Reed. anyways. Patrick Reed, like, whatever. Like, those are guys that are always going to play the Masters. It doesn't matter if they've just been sitting on their couch for four months or not. Like, they're just going to they're just gonna dust the clubs off and go out there and ball at Augusta. So I don't really want to read too much into it uh, from that perspective just because this is such a different golf tournament than, like, Augusta National is. Do you watch uh, any live, Elizabeth? So I have, yes. I've not been there in person, but I have watched it. And it is a, a different atmosphere, that is for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, like, this is my biggest thing. And Nate touched on this. Is like, I mean, I watch it sometimes on the CW, like when the CW will come in clearly on my stupid TV. But um, I it's because it's it's team and it's shotgun it's hard for me to just from the eye test be like oh this guy's playing well this guy's playing well that may just be because we're all used to the pga at least for me that's the issue the st the lack of statistics is like infuriating i mean i part of me just wishes the pga would just track some of the stuff for us because i don't really i mean live doesn't seem to have um the infrastructure to do something like the pga tour does which is really incredible with their stat tracking there's some stuff on data golf, I suppose, but it's really hard to find strokes, gains numbers for them. You don't know what they mean. They only play three days a week. So they don't play four. So even if you do like their stuff, I mean, it's just, I don't know, like, like Nate's saying, it's really hard for me to see, to look at these guys and go like, well, I think he's playing well, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't have any numbers to, to back it up. So, and you're right, Nate. I mean, these guys have, um, the the boards have shifted and overreacted to some of the master stuff, I think. Yeah. But 100%. even still, um, I kind of like some of these guys. And I took a long, hard look at Bryson DeChambeau, and I don't know why. So well, maybe we can talk about that later. Um, I just, I don't know. Well, okay, so he lost a bunch of weight. Let's just talk about it now. All right, so, <laughs> so like... I, I saw a picture of him and I was like, oh, he looks kind of svelte. So that's good, right? That like, that he looks athletic. It doesn't look like he's like shoving like just Papa John's in his mouth every chance he gets. And, you know, he, he hits it off the 
T pretty well. I don't know. He, I think he won a tournament when it was at the other course that East or whatever. Um, and like, he likes, I think he likes playing up in Rochester. That's not a stat I can back up, but it just feels like New York feels like his turf. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, Nate. I don't know. I almost put him on the card, but I, I have no reason to. So I kept him off. What are his odds? Even like, is oh, oh, 1100 to one. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> a 110 to one. Yeah. 110 Jesus. to one. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he's not playing well. No, no. he hasn't been. And I, I think it's this whole shift. If you want to go into the analyzing what he's done from, you know, just a physical standpoint, I think that's, it, it's tough. It's tough when you've bulked up like that and your, your goal is just to smash the golf ball down the middle of the fairway to uh, leaning out, getting fit, being more of that athletic build that he was before. I mean, that takes a toll on your body for sure. And I think that's also why he's not playing well, if you want my opinion on that. I think that that's you know, something that he's got to get back into understanding where his body's at and just where, what feels good in his golf swing. And right now, I think it's a transformation that he's going through of, uh, hey, I used to be this Hulk smash guy, and now I am more of the athletic build. How can I keep that power and how can I actually keep my swing where it was? So I think that's why he's all over the place right now. Do you think it's an identity crisis or, or just a, a body thing? I think it's a little bit of an identity crisis as well. Uh, that's from just a physical standpoint, you know, it's a body thing, but mentally it's very much of where's he falling right now. Um, I agree with you. He loves New York in regards to those, just the way that the course is set up for him. But I, I feel like he's going through an identity crisis of who's Bryson and where, you know, where is he going to fall in the golf legacy world? I saw, I try. I'm trying to pull it up. I can't find it. I saw what he said he was eating and it was like insane. I mean, when he was bulking, like, no, no. Like what he's done now when he was bulking. Yeah. It was just, I mean, he was like trying <laughs> was to like, like, like eat as much as the numbers, rock. Yeah. yeah. Or like, um, or, or Michael Phelps, but even now it's like, he, he went from, you know, eating anything in sight to like no processed anything, no whole grains, no sugar, you know, um, like nothing. It's just, I, I imagine it's just protein. Oh, and so like, serious doing is, is the whole 30 diet. Uh, yes. So, yeah. The raw, the like food. raw vegetables, like nothing cooked except for your protein source and it has to be grilled instead of fried. And it's, yeah, it just sounds like an awful diet to be honest with you. Especially for a professional athlete. And you're right. I mean, that stuff affects them. We talk about, uh, we talk UFC on the Saturday radio show all the time. And we talk with some retired fighters and they talk about that weight loss stuff all the time where they're just like, it's really hard to adjust when you're going up and down a weight class, especially when you're going down, seems to be much easier to go up a little bit as we saw with Bryson who went up and won a bunch of tournaments. So yeah. Um, who knows? I mean, who knows what else he gave up uh, in his workout routine that we might uh, not mention here on the show. Okay. So before we move on to the course, Chan Cam, we went a little long there, but that's okay. I want to thank Beard Vet Coffee. Nate's got the shirt on there. Beard Vet Coffee is an incredible partner for us. Listen up, Patriots. Are you tired of drinking coffee from mega corporations that don't give a rip about you? Then put down that cup of regret and grab yourself some Beard Vet Coffee. It's darn good coffee from a company that is veteran-founded, veteran-focused, and beard-operated. And let's be real. If you're not drinking beard vet coffee, you might as well be sipping on a cup of burnt soy and tears. So join the ranks of the unapologetic. Go to beardvet.com. That's beardvet.com and taste the freedom. All right. We want to always want to thank beard vet. So Nate, very quickly, give us a little Chan cam here. Where in the world is Cham Kim this week? Chanimal is in Canton, Massachusetts for the corn Ferry event. So he's back in action. I can finally stop just, Wondering where the hell he is all the time. Um, he's at the Advent Health Championship playing playing in a corn fairy event. So I don't have to look in Asia to see if he jetted off to Korea or Japan. We know where he is. He's just playing a normal event. So Chanimal is 40 to 1 this week. We'll see if he can get the deal deal closed in, in the corn fairy. He's got a little bit of ground to make up. He's 35th in their rankings right now. So he's got a little little ground to cover before he can get that top 25 in that tour exemption next year. You bet him? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You don't, you know, we're not holding the gun to your head here. Uh, okay. Well, look, he's been on the couch for a couple weeks. 
little R and R for Chandler. Rested. Yeah, we needed it. He's been playing like garbage. Yeah, maybe he fixed his swing or something. I don't know. Maybe. Um, we'll see. You'll have to update us, Nate, after uh, after the corn fairy there on the channel. And if he wins, you're screwed. Okay, oh Elizabeth, let's go to um, Oak Hill because this is just a major talking point here. The course redesign. If you could just take us through a little bit of, of the course redesign and some of the major things that you're looking for as far as performance goes with this course this week. Yeah, so as we know, it's a par 70. Um, it is a, an extremely long course. I think the um, it's playing over 7,300 yards, um, which is just crazy. Um, but from a course redesign standpoint, they've removed a lot of trees. They've done a lot of work on the greens as well as some bunkers. Um, the tree removal, I think, is the most quote unquote controversial um, thing that they've done on the course, just because a lot of members were strictly against it and um, have actually fought for a couple years to have that not occur. So it's going to be very interesting to see because I think it's going to play like a completely different golf course without the trees. Um, the trees, of course, would be narrow in the fairways, um, making you really take shots that are going to challenge you, um, especially for that second shot um, and then into the greens. And so I think the, the tree piece is going to be interesting. It's going to also make the fairways possibly look a lot um, wider than they are. So I, I think from a, a visual standpoint, it's going to be very interesting to see how these players play them, um, as well as if it actually makes the scores go lower this week and into the weekend. Um, so that's going to be super interesting. I think the greens also, just the way that they've made some changes on the greens, they're, they're going to be difficult to read. Um, I know we've, we've heard a lot of players even mention that. Um, but I, I think because of that, it can be anybody can make a run at it. I mean, all these players can get off the tee well. I really do like a lot of players that are, are big ball strikers off the tee. Um, and have that length. But I, I do think because of the greens and the bunkers and the changes, it, it's anybody's game um, this week and into the weekend. So um, we'll see, but I think the greens and then the, the trees are gonna play the biggest impact. So what is, Elizabeth, what's the big objection to the trees? Like why did it take them so long to get these removed? Yeah, so a lot of members were very much like, you don't change the integral structure of um, of the holes, of the fairways, of the look and feel of the course. Um, a, lot, a lot of players are now saying that it feels like even more like Marion in regards to the way that it's looking off the tee. And I feel like that's the reason that members were protesting it, at least in some testimonials that I've read, because they wanted to keep that traditional, you know, Oak Hill feel. I mean, that's why they brought in oak trees from everywhere across the, the world as they were building out this course. Um, so I feel like it's definitely the history and, and really the identity of the golf course that the members wanted to keep. Nate, from a betting perspective, like how does this change how you looked at the card this week? I mean, <clears throat> from a betting perspective, it's, it's been tricky, right? Because the, the previous winners at Oak Hill were Sean McKeel won his only PJ tour event there. Um, and then it was at Duffner most recently in 2013. Like, I mean, if you're just like trying to like reverse engineer what Duffner did, it's like accurate off the tee, hit a lot of greens in regulation, short game, not very good, not very long off the tee. So like basically just like iron player, ball striker type guy. Uh, and then and then all week I read about what is this course going to look like? And everyone talked about how long it was and blah, blah, you know, bombers paradise, yada, yada. So then I started thinking, well, maybe it's just like a, off the tee thing, you know? So then I started looking really hard at like guys like Cam Young, be now stuff like that and i'm like oh maybe it just is a bomber's course and then right before the show i i think i sent it to you jack um and and i was talking to elizabeth about it and then it's like and then i watched joel damon just be like anyone can win here he's like even me he's like the ball just rolls forever on these fairways uh, it really doesn't eliminate anyone because he said that he was kind of like upset because he had come into this week and everyone said bomber's paradise as well and then he played nine holes and he's like it's not that bad so now I just feel like I'm rethinking everything um, from a handicapping perspective. I feel like now I have like too much information and I'm just like, well, maybe anybody can win. It seems like there are a lot of paths. I mean, a lot of people are going to miss greens. So short game is probably going to be important. You know, everyone's going to miss fairways. So, you know, approach game is probably going to be more important than driving, you know, but then distance is also important because you want shorter approaches with, with the, with the rough. So I don't know, like just now I'm just like a mess handicapping wise. Like I, I, I'm just completely lost in, in the forest. 
Yeah, you just summarized golf. Yeah. Like you were just that's like, where well, it's been all afternoon, man. <laughs> you were just like, well, yeah, I mean, short game, that's important. But then, you know, you got to play well with your irons in order to be, you know, set yourself up in a short game. And then, you know, in order to do that, you got to hit it off the tee well. Like, yeah, man. So you got to play good golf, I guess. Total okay. Effort. Total yeah. effort yeah. is what we want this week. Yeah. Strokes gained golf. That's what you're looking yeah, for. Just, just like this strokes week. gained, just do it the right way, like I think you should. <laughs> it's easy right it's easy yeah, stuff no problem. <laughs> 330 you know, I off read... the and just hit it with a wedge man there you go yeah that's what i do every time um elizabeth uh like did this change the way you looked at anybody i mean the tree removal is an issue it also seems though that the around the greens might be a little bit trickier um are there other things that you may have looked at this year that you haven't been looking at yeah, I would say I looked mainly still length off the tee. Um, that was still my number one, just because I feel like that's super important, um, especially at this course, just how long it's playing. Um, I did take a look at short game and really trying to figure out who's a player that's going to be strategic enough with new greens when they get on the green from a putter standpoint, but um, also making sure they've got a strategy of getting on the green and, and uh, playing smart because it's really in regards to your misses around the green in my mind of who's going to have the lower score. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I, I feel exactly where you're at with the around the green and everyone I picked is just a disaster other than like a couple of the guys. I mean, they're just disasters around the green. So um, but that's because I went so heavy with the bombers and I, I'm kind of rethinking how I did that, but I'm just going to stick with it. Now. I just figure long course, just give me guys that just smash off the tee and then think we'll figure it out later once they're, um, <laughs> once they're in the fairway or something. Uh, so, you know, we'll see how those guys work out. I'm not exactly sure. Um, my picks are, are just absolutely fire as far as the logos, but, um, but we'll see. Yeah. Around the green. I, I ignored all these guys I picked except for Rom, which we'll talk about now, um, are just a mess around the green. So let's get into that then. Uh, we'll, we'll play a little who's in our bag here, Elizabeth. This is kind of the idiosyncratic way that we talk about picks. The driver here is the, the, one of the heavy favorites. We usually go like 20 to 1, so anyone kind of in that range is fine. Um, well, of course, we'll start with our guests. Who, who might be your driver as far as the heavy favorites go? Yeah, so my driver is John Rahm. Um, I really feel like he has been playing great this year. I mean, we have seen him win a lot, um, but I, I do feel like he's got the length off the tee as well as he's got that strategy to get on the green. And I think that that's going to be, as I mentioned earlier, super important with this course. So um, he's he's really my driver. Nate? Yeah. I like Scotty. Um hmm. I mean, what's not to like? He does everything that I want a golfer to do well. Um, like, I mean, there's just, well, he's never, he hasn't finished outside of the top 12 all season. Uh, you know, he's got two wins. He tends to play his best, you know, in these big events. And, and he's just like checks all the boxes first in greens and regulation, second in scoring average, second in strokes gain total, first in strokes gain T to green like 22nd in drive in accuracy, 25th in distance. He's plenty long enough for this course. Like what, like, why not? Like, I mean, I, I get that Rom is playing great, but like, so is Scotty. Scotty almost won last week. So, you know. Yeah, I, I was this was close to picking Scotty. So yeah, I totally hear you. He's, he's got great numbers and he just approaches majors too in a great way mentally. Yeah, I mean, he's the odds on favorite uh, seven and one. I'm, I'm so happy to get eight to one on Rom. I think he should be, I think he should be four to one. I mean, I just, the, the way this is, that's Rom's my driver as well. Uh, Tiger and I his mean, prime odds is what you think. Huh? Tiger and his prime odds is what you think is fair for John Rom. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Four to one minus 150. That's what I think is fair for Rom. Anything above minus 150, I'm taking my boy John. Rom because he's first in strokes gain total. He's first in off or 16th off the tee strokes gain third in approach total driving sixth driving accuracy is 73rd. We've all known him to hit a couple uh, into the trees here and there uh, bogey avoidance third, of course, <clears throat> second place at Mexico. He could have won that um, tied 15th at RBC after the masters first at the masters first at Genesis first at Amex first at century 
I mean, I just think he's playing better golf than Scotty. If we're just talking Scotty versus Rom, I'm I'm just gonna take Rom right now. I don't care that he won the Masters and maybe like, well, maybe Scotty gets a a major because that's kind of how golf goes. I mean, I just I like him here in this spot. I don't like any of these other guys. I mean, Shoffley at eighteen to one, gross. No, can't lay sixteen to one. No, thank you. Rory sixteen to one. No, thank you. I. Elizabeth, I had a love affair with Rory for like three months. I mean, I would have taken him at minus 450. I just thought he was going to win a tournament. <laughs> and all he did yeah, was just hit me all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and Nate, to his credit, has been the lone detractor for a couple of weeks. Being like, <laughs> you guys are just in love with the idea of Rory. You're not in love with the way Rory's playing. He's not playing that well. I don't think he's playing, you know, 16 to 1. Um, odds either no. so I don't have any interest in Rory. no he's my putter because I'm like you're he's gonna be the one that you're gonna regret betting on and watch I might regret saying that but um I, I really don't feel like he's got it I feel like he um has been more focused on what's happening out in the golf world than his swing I think he even mentioned you know he's brought his swing coach back in from Florida and he's working on it and I'm like where's where's that been um, we needed that a, a couple of weeks ago for him to focus on his game and, and to really get his mind right. Um, from a mental standpoint, I feel like he's kind of a wreck right now just because his focus is elsewhere. He's absolutely a wreck. I mean, he is the only player to miss two elevated events. Uh, he's not playing well. And he's a guy who has to be hyper-focused. I mean, he just, that's how he plays. He's not someone who can just come in off the couch and win a major. He just doesn't play mentally. He's not like that. 16 to one is trash odds for Rory right now. It's not trash odds for Rory when he's playing well, it's great odds, but you know, I mean, it's just, this is, I don't have any interest in either of those guys going up against Scheffler and Rom at that short price. So you know, no, thank you. I mean, just no, thank you. Um, I don't have any interest in Fino at 22 to one either. Um, you know, I know he won a couple weeks ago. But... That's your iron? No, I don't know. I'm going back and forth. So. Okay, well, that's the next segment. So okay. you, might, you need to pick one. Uh, I'll pick one okay. then. Okay, here we go. So, Elizabeth, we're going to go to our irons. These are our guys, all reliables. These dudes usually win tournaments, although mine has never won a tournament. Um, and, are, you know, middle-of-the-road odds, kind of just that, you know, eight iron or six iron that you just always kind of grab and can um, – hit straight, I guess. So we'll start with you, Elizabeth. Who's your iron this week? Yeah, so this might be a, a wild card one for you guys, but it's Brooks Kepka. Um, as I've talked about earlier, um, he is bombing it off the tee. Um, I know we don't really have stats to back this up. So this is mainly a gut bet for me um, and a gut feel. Um, but I feel like he's in the right mindset, as I mentioned earlier, just approaching majors differently. Um, really coming in. I, I think that he has been hungry for a major, especially on the PGA tour with the whole live situation. So I, he, he's mine this week. So we'll see, we'll see how he does. Oh, I thought about him. I thought about him. You think about him, Nate? I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I gave him and, and DJ a long, hard look. I mean, especially Brooks, just because, like like Elizabeth was saying earlier, like the major preparation stuff is just, like, so ridiculous. Like, like the, he doesn't need to play, like, golf very often to compete in majors. So it's just – he's just like – he's it's like him and then everybody else. Um, so, I mean, I think that, yeah, he's worth a really hard look. I, I didn't bet on him, but, I mean, I can certainly understand why people would want to. I mean, he's already won two of these damn things. Yeah. Uh, man, those – he had some long odds at the Masters. Um, they were like 101 at one point, 80 to one. They kind of creeped down to like 45 to one. I almost took him at 45 to one, and then you know he almost won the Masters. So uh, I think that's that's always a good pick. Nate, who's your iron? All right, I was between Jason Day and Tony Finau for this. I'm gonna go with Jason Day. Uh, I mean, just because like he's he's a guy that we love. Um, you know, I've always liked him and this just looks, he's won two, twice in a row before. So this wouldn't be like anything new for his career. He's already won a major. He won the 2015 PGA. And I'm just like, we talked about this at the beginning of the show, like is Jason day back. And it's like, yeah. yeah. And, and even, even when he was playing like not as well, he's still really good at this tournament. I mean, he had a tie for fourth in 2020 and kind of a down year for him. 
He's, you know, he's played, he's made 10 consecutive cuts at the PGA championship. So even when things are like not awesome for Jason Day, he seems to bring it for this one event anyways. And you just like look up and down at just, there's nothing weak. 11 strokes game putting, 7 strokes game total, 17th in greens and regulation, 12th tee to green, 17th approach, 30th around the green. Like, there's just nothing. And he was top 10 here when they played it in 2013. So, you know, if I'm just thinking about a guy that, you know, I'd like to win again, I mean, 28 to 1 is not like the worst odds. I mean, the full disclosure, I guess, is that I bet him at 60 to 1 like about a month or two ago. Um, when he was much higher odds. So I already just have been holding a day ticket and just hoping that he didn't just totally implode, um, you know, or like get sick or whatever. But uh, yeah, I mean, Jason Day's my iron. I think, you know, if you're just looking for a reliable guy, like all the stats point towards him being, you know, a safe play this week. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, and I think that he can win here. I think that there's no saying he can't win twice in a row. He's playing just about as well as he's, he's always played. So I think that's a good bet. I made, so I, this, this, this Cam Smith is not on my list here, but he is in my account because I accidentally bet him for this tournament <laughs> when I was trying to bet him for the masters. Uh, I think I had, had a couple too many drinks and um, I got him at 30 to one. He's not 35 to one. So great. For me um but i guess go cam smith i don't want him like i don't i'm not i don't think he's gonna win but if he does then i made the right choice and i'm also i need to check that card because it might be for next year's pga tournament um <laughs> i just have no idea <laughs> it's just make sure it's you always, get the right here yeah like if i if i Consummate click the open, professionals yeah absolutely if i click the open bets he's always there it's just he's cam smith 30 to 1 pga it's there um so it's like a specter haunting all of my bad decisions in life. Um, I'm going with a different cam for my iron. I like Cam Young here. Um, yeah. 30 to 1. <sighs> he hasn't won a major, so that's... He hasn't won anything. He hasn't won, he hasn't won anything. <laughs> so forget a major. He hasn't won a tournament, but, but he can. He can win a tournament. Um, total strokes gained 60th. Okay, fine. T to green, 23rd. I kind of like that. Off the tee. I mean, I just, I just liked him because he's a bomber. Off the tee, 18th strokes gained. And his approach game isn't too bad. 33rd, total driving 19th. Driving accuracy, which we don't really care about, is 129th. Um, not as, as important as it would be in years past here. Bogey avoidance, 134th. I kind of wish that were a little bit better. I've been looking at bogey avoidance, but it's not something that worries me too much. I mean, I just like the approach. I think the ball striking is there with the off the tee stuff. And the tee to green stuff's pretty good at 30 to 1. I like him top 10 um, at 3 to 1. I think that that's a pretty safe play. He tied for seventh at the Masters this year. Uh, but other than that, everything's kind of been, I mean, tied for 59th at Wells Fargo, 51st at RBC, tied for 51st at the players. So he hasn't exactly like been killing top 10, top 20 um, appearances, especially some of these elevated events or the majors. But the Masters thing I think is real. And I think that he can, I think at 30 to one, I just like him a little bit more than some of these other guys especially because he can just crush it off the tee yeah i mean he's like he's a good bet if you know it's like he either misses the cut by like a mile or he finishes in the top 10 there's like no yeah. he's like feast or famine he's got what seven starts in majors and he's missed four cuts and in the three that he's made the cut and he's tied for seventh second place solo and a tie for third he has like no other results in the money like they're just it's just green or nothing I just need him to make the cut. Yeah. And what I'll probably do is, is take him top 10. I mean, I outright, I mean, for this, I'm touting him as a, a good outright bet at 30 to one, but the three to one top 10, I kind of like a lot. And be, that's because I, I think he's kind of a lock if he's playing even remotely good, especially at a course like this. Uh, so, you know, we'll see. We'll see. All very nice picks from, um, from y'all. One of the things that I want us to uh, do before we talk about some of our, our wedges here is thank Ignite45, one of our partners here. If you're a small business owner struggling to generate leads and revenue, then this message is for you. In today's economy, a winning digital strategy is a must. Without it, your business could fall behind and lose out. Many business owners struggle with outdated websites and no real presence on Google when people are searching for their services. But don't be discouraged because Ignite45 can fix that. 
They design great websites that turn visitors into paying customers and create SEO strategies that rank business on top of search results. Ignite45 is also the first digital agency dedicated to helping your business reach millions on your social media platform of your choice. If you're ready to see real results and work with a digital partner that shares your values, then give them a call today at 720-740-1776. That's 720-740-1776. Or go to www.ignite45.com backslash Godzilla. That's www.ignite45.com backslash Godzilla. Use the promo code Godzilla to save 100 on your digital needs. Thank you, Ignacio and Ignite45 for making all of this possible. All right, time for the wedges. This is the um, guy who never seems to win, but you like him anyway. Elizabeth, start with you. So I was torn between two on this one, um, and I'll explain why. Um, so I'm torn between Ricky and Colin Morikara, and I know Colin has won, but I just feel like it's not been recent, and we just have not shown up very well. So if I had to pick one, it would be Colin. Um, but I, I just feel like, you know, Ricky, poor guy, like I always want to root for him. I always want to see him, you know, get back in the winner's circle. And I, I feel like, you know, he's somebody that I, I feel like he's a likable guy, but he just never gets it done. Like he's always, you know, either in the hunt or he's awful. It's one of the two. Um, Colin, I absolutely love him as a golfer. Um, really want to see him show up once again. I know he's won in the past, but it's been a while and I feel like we, you know, we haven't seen a lot from him. So I'm very interested in seeing him you know, show up this week. Nate, you're a big Colin guy. Yeah. At times. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not this week. Not this week. No. I mean, uh, the results just haven't been there that much lately. I kind of like every, it seems like every time I'm like, Oh, this is Colin more college golf course. It sucks. So like, I kind of, <laughs> uh, he, he kind of was off my radar this week. I mean, this looks like the perfect course for him, like in terms of just like ball striking excellence, like, you know, he's right there, but he's also coming off two missed cuts. You know, he hasn't really had a good result since the masters. So he's not like my favorite, favorite guy this week. I have this asinine theory that Colin Morikawa can't play golf unless the weather conditions are like perfect. And I have like yeah. barely, I have like no evidence to back that up except for one tournament I watched him play in Florida where it was like kind of windy. And I was like, this guy sucks unless it's sunny out, um, which is not true. Colin Morikawa is an incredible golfer at all times. But um, if it's cold, I'm not betting him. I mean, forget it. Like if he's got to wear a jacket, no, no, absolutely not. That's all I and need. And it has been cold. Yeah, it's going to yeah, be freezing. Kind of blustery, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you, he's going to get off the course. On Thursday, he's going to be like, that was really cold. And, you know, so it took my, a while for my hands to warm up. And then the wind started kicking. And that's why I shot plus three. Um, I'm telling you, it's going to happen, which it probably won't. He'll probably shoot, you know, six under and be like the first round leader. Ricky, I love. That's a great pick. I mean, dude has just been playing a lot better than we think. Mm -hmm. Total strokes gained is he's 11th on tour, which you wouldn't think. Tita Green, he's 16th. Approach, he's 7th. You know, around the green's been tough, but the putting's always been there. You know, flat sticks, 40th, not as good as usual. Total driving looks good. I mean, I think that Ricky, who has transcended the Fowler line, which we call 65 to 1. Ricky's always about 65 to 1. And he's, he's creeped up there now. He's 55 to 1 now, yeah. Yeah, well, that's not 65 to 1. Uh, so he's, he's no getting some, a little... Ricky. No, no. That's our, that's our principal, <laughs> uh, Elizabeth. If if Ricky's Love 70 it. to one, you bet him. If he's 60 to one, you don't. That's the foul yeah. line. Um, but yeah, we, I don't know. Uh, it's not a bad bet. I, uh, well, mine sucks. I, I, this is a bad bet. Uh, I like Gary Woodland, the wood chipper here at uh, 90 ooh. to one. <laughs> I don't know why. Look, this is just, I, I, I have some statistics to back it up, but I just watched him in that stupid group with Brooks Kepka on Saturday at the Masters or Sunday. And I was like, man, this guy, he's just, what a great golfer, just smacking it around. Um, and the, the masters was, was good for him. 14th, uh, finished there played better than Brooks. I think on Sunday strokes, mm -hmm. total strokes gain. He's 81st, but I like the TD green stuff. 22nd. Of course he's a bomber again. I'm, I mean, I'm gravitating towards bombers this week. So off the T's 10th approach is 10th, uh, but God, he can't putt and his around the green sucks too. 
I mean, you get him close and, and that's going to be a problem. I don't think the putting's going to be as an issue. Like we talked about, I just think everybody's going to kind of struggle, but you got to be able to get it on the green. And uh, I, I don't think that he's going to be totally successful in that category. That's not um, a great, but I don't know. I mean, 14th at the Wells Fargo tied for 39th at Mexico. Okay. Tied for 31st at RBC 14th at the masters 45th at the Bows bar. Like he's making cuts and he's making moves. And like, I have another guy on my list. Who's who's I just think at 90 to one Woodland's odds are too good to pass up for a guy who's playing. I think way better than that. Seven to one. If you like him top 10, which I would recommend doing. Um, I don't think what Gary Woodland's going to cash a 90 to one outright. Uh, but I do think he can finish ninth, which is all I need to make seventy dollars. Um, so I don't know. That's my wedge. All right, you the want my chipper. wedge? Yeah. Oh, I skipped you, didn't I? I was so excited about Woodland. I yeah, know. my bad. <laughs> my wedge is. I mean, it's probably not a surprise. Well, it is a surprise. So much like you, my logos was like bomber, 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 and then I started thinking more, and then I was like come back to the guy that I always go to when I just want a well-rounded player who never wins Tyrrell Hatton. Mm. My, my love for Tyrrell Hatton is well-documented and we share much pain together on a golf course as we watch him just mutter and curse his way through rounds. Um, but I mean, like he's just been playing good. Like he's been playing good and nobody's talking about it. Solo second of the players tie for third at Wells Fargo tie for fourth with Arnold Palmer this season tie for fifth last week at the Byron Nelson. Tie for six of the waste management and elevated event. Tie for seventh in Abu Dhabi with a strong field. Like everything, I like, guess, pointing towards like he has to win at some point. And we've been talking about that on the show a lot, right? Like we've been we've been talking about Jason Day for for weeks before he won last week. We were talking about Wyndham Clark being ready to to win uh, before he won at Quail Hollow. It's like I think Hatton is like the last guy that I'm looking at, just being like, when does the win come? Like everything is good. Like every stat is good. 25th in putting, 13th approach, 8th off the tee, 6th tee degree. Like, everything's good. At some point, he'll just, you know, not hate a golf course or himself for a few hours, and he'll win. And he might even do it while he's hating everything around him. But, you know, I just we just got to get that head right, Terrell. Yeah, you do. But you got to. Look, I mean, it- he even had a pretty decent Masters, and he hates Augusta National. Yeah, he like, despises that golf course. He finished like 35th there. And it's like, well, if he could, you know, play okay on a course that he thinks sucks, then like maybe, you know, this will be better. He just hates golf. I, but, think, he does. I think he hates himself too. Yeah. <laughs> which is why you like him. Um, I, I guess, yeah, he's, he's not a bad pick. He's playing well. And you got to think like, you just got to keep hammering the guys who you like and are playing well, because we saw this with Witham Clark and Jason Day. Um, I mean, a lot of touts had been on both of those guys for a while and they finally won because that's how this goes. It might not be this week, but if you like a guy at some point, he's going to get one and Hatton can certainly do that. And he can win a major, uh, Elizabeth bet and regret. I know you mentioned, I think Brooks, uh, one of your live guys. Um, yeah, it's actually Rory for me on this one. Oh yeah. Rory. That's right. My bad. Um, so no, tell, don't us worry. Why, tell us why. Yeah. Rory is your bet and regret. So as I mentioned earlier, I just feel like he's been a wreck recently. He's not been focused on his golf game. He's been focused on everything that's going on in the golf world. Um, I I do think that, you know, he might surprise me in regards to when swing coach shows up and he's really focused on it. I mean, he, he may come out, but um, I I just feel like there's been way too many weeks that I'm like, Oh, he's got this. And then he's absolutely a disaster. So it's Rory for me. Yeah, and a lot of our guests end up choosing some of the short odds guys in that bet and regret category because it's true. It's like, well, they could win, but it's not fun put put uh, punching that ticket. Nate, yeah. bet and regret. Max Homa. Oh, I mean, yeah, I'm a huge I like Homa that. guy. I'm a huge Homa guy, and he's just been like, I I took like the like the worst possible like when I was being a genius, I took like the worst possible odds at 20 to one and now he's 35 to one so I, I regret that um and then it's just like he just hasn't been playing that well like he's certainly not 20 to one level of play right now i mean he, he missed two cuts in a row before you know firing off a top 10 to the wells fargo but it's just like i, I keep thinking he's another one that I, I just keep saying like he's gonna break through he's gonna win a major he's gonna you know do something awesome and his results in majors are still just like not good. It's just his 
But, you know, I talked myself into it because I'm like, oh, he played really well at the beginning of the season. That's when I made the bet. And then it's like, you know, he had a top a tie for 13th uh, last year's PGA. It's really his only good finish in a major. Um, everything else is like, you know, 40th or worse, or he just misses the cut. So, you know, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I, I just don't feel good about it right now. I mean, maybe, maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe he'll surprise me, but I just, I don't feel like Homa was my best move in my golf gambling career. No, no. That, I was watching the golf channel and they were like, who's your pick? And someone was like, Max Homa. And everybody oh, was like, great. oh, no, I regret it even more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, they're like, oh, what a pick. And I was thinking, no, it's not. That's not a good pick. He's not been playing well at all. Um, you know, and as, as though that's like, even like a crafty pick when you're on national television, like Max right. Homa. Like, I mean, just, just picking guys out of a hat at that point. Uh, yeah, I'm with you there. Um, so mine is a live guy, uh, DJ. 30 to one. I have no stats on him. So that's one of the reasons it's my bet and regret. It's like, I don't even know how to defend him. He won last week at, yeah. at Tulsa, you know, tough course um, at, at Tulsa. Uh, I think it actually is a tough course. Um, and so he won last week. He has been playing better. We all know he can win a major. We know he's a bomber. Um, not great at the Masters, you know, tied for 48. But what I really like, so, I mean, again, I'm just not sure these live guys, even someone like DJ, have, like, the stamina to get all to, to get to Sunday. But I really like him. So top five finish, he's, like, 35 to one. No, I'm sorry. Top five finish after round one. This is what I like. Top five finish after round one plus 800. I feel like DJ probably comes out and just balls on Thursday. We've definitely seen that happen before. Um, and I love my, my round one prop bets because I get a little action yeah. on Thursday. Yeah. I, I've never, Elizabeth, I've never won one in my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Maybe, I'm, maybe this week is it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't, um, yeah, I'm, I'm like the worst golf tout in the universe, uh, just in general. That's sometimes I don't know why I'm on a show, uh, but, uh, in, I've never won a round one, but I keep hammering them, uh, top five round one plus 835 to one, just to lead outright on in round one, 30 to one altogether. So I just really like him this week because of the live guys, I know he's got what it takes to win a tournament. And, you know, he did just win, so he has been playing well. But there's no stats to back it up. So it's my bet and regret because it's like I don't really know how to justify that win. Um, but I'm excited to watch him play. Yeah, he's going to be good off the tee. It's just his short game, whether it shows up or not. I'm hoping it does. And he's, and he's like uh, finally healthy. He said he had like a back strain earlier in the season. Yeah. And he's been, he's been getting loose with the media already. I always yeah. think that's a good sign, you, you know, yeah. When he's comfortable and he's in a, head, a good head space and he's cracking jokes with the media, I just feel like I, I know he's going to be sort of sniffing around the leaderboard at some point. I don't know if it's going to be Thursday. I'm hoping it's Sunday. So we'll see. Um, before we get to our long shots here, we'll close up the show with that. We got to thank Rosie's gaming Emporium for partnering with us here. Today's show is brought to you by Rosie's gaming Emporium. Rosie's has paid out over 475 million dollars in jackpots so far this year february winners include and that was a long time ago those are february winners alex won 140 140 thousand dollars in dumfries tabitha 99 big ones in richmond douglas big doug 9300 again in rumfries dumfries uh robert 46 grand in vinton out there in virginia starting in march now may new members play for free at rosie sign up for free Rosie's rewards card and instantly receive $25 to $1,000 in free play for your first visit. Don't forget, horse racing starts July 13th at Colonial Downs in New Kent, Virginia. My father, the Godzilla of Truth, will have his suite. He will be broadcasting his show from there. Um, Preakness coming up this week. So you can bet the Preakness if you go to Colonial Downs, I'm sure. Okay, let's get to our long shots um that's the hybrid you know tough tough club to figure out but if you can connect man it can go far elizabeth who's your long shot joel damon all the way um yeah. i feel like yeah. number one just love him in general 
Um, two, I feel like the fact that he's like, anybody can win out here means that he thinks he can. Um, and I know that we've seen that in an interview as well, but I, I just feel like he doesn't give himself enough credit. And that was very apparent in the whole full swing episode. But I feel like if he thinks that he's got a chance, he can show up and he can get it done. What's his odds? Do you know? I don't. We'll, we'll pull him up. Nate, who's your long shot? I'll look at Joel Damon's odds. Uh, I like Keegan Bradley. Um, you know, it's like any time that a tournament kind of moves to the Northeast, he seems to get a little bit more fired up. He's a big Northeast guy. Um, and this just feels like an event that, you know, he could be kind of sneaky good at, and he's got really long odds right now. He's a hundred to one or he's 90 to one right now, or a hundred to one, depending on where you bet him. So he's a guy that like, he's just been playing a lot better, but it's just been kind of under the radar. Um, but the stats look pretty solid to me aside from around the green stuff where he's basically just like, even with the, even with the sort of tour, uh, the, the, the question mark for so long with Keegan was when is he going to like not be a total liability on the greens? And he's finally seemed to have found a style that works for him that allows him to putt um, not horribly. So, you know, from that perspective, he hits a plenty long for this course. Like that's not going to be an issue. Um, it's just about putting everything together, but I mean, at a hundred to one, I could think of like worse things than a major, than a past champion of the PGA championship. Who's, who's been playing sort of sneaky, good golf lately. Um, so Keegan's sort of my, my long shot guy. I'm a little disappointed. You didn't go with, uh, Thor Bjorn Olison. Dude, I'm done with Thunder Bear. He was so <laughs> bad at the Zurich when we talked about him. <laughs> I'm done with that guy. Dragging my Thunder guy, Hoshgar just down into the gutter with him. Yeah, that's right. You know, I'm trying to find the Joel Damon stuff, and this is just a rogues gallery of, like, our worst picks. Like, just <laughs> going down here to the the end of the line. I mean, some like, I mean, me, touting. I mean, I was all over Emil Emiliano Grio during the wrong week. You got to be real specific with him. Um, you know, Thomas Dietrich, we've loved before. Uh, you can snag him for 300 to 1. Uh, Taylor Montgomery, who I was all over last week. 300 to 1 for Damon. There we go, 400 to one. So, I mean, you're yeah. just, <laughs> man, if you think Deep. Damon's got, I mean, that is, yeah, that's why I couldn't find him. You know, God, I mean, I, Kashmir Keith at 200 to one, um, which it feels a little disrespectful of Keith Mitchell there. That does guy. feel a little disrespectful mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. yeah, super disrespectful. Um, Harris English at 180 to one, extremely disrespectful. Also been playing well. That's my boy. You should never disrespect Harris English. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of disrespect here, you know, KH Lee to 250 to one um, for, yeah, but uh, <laughs> Hoge guard 250 to one, man, this is just, Nate, you just live in these odds. These <laughs> golfers are just, this is where you just live. It's just devastating. Um, I like, uh, I, so two guys I, I kind of like, and I don't know. So I like Phil Mickelson for a top 10, at like 14 to one. I mean, why not? He won the PGA a couple of years ago played well at the masters i don't think he's gonna win the pga at 250 to one but you're telling me he can't sneak in the top 10 i mean that's like what he does especially these events um but it's it's a long course for an old guy uh, so that's not uh not my most that's not a, a serious choice here my hybrid really is sahith um if you're going if you're going to keep giving me 90 to one on sahith the gala i'm going to keep taking it because one day he's going to win and it's going to atone for all of my sins um, it's not going to take 90 tries for him to get a win. No, it's not. I mean, he, 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 he's priced wrong. I mean, he just is. So I'm gonna keep taking it. Total strokes gained factor, 46. Man. Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. is no quantifiable I mean, reason why he's good at golf. He just is. He, he's really good. <laughs> All lucky. <laughs> Super lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, and he's yeah. going to, and he's going to win at some point. I mean, all of this is good. His off the tee is bad. So it's not a bomber. Um, but you know, TD green 65th, I just, in, I mean, his numbers aren't great, but like tied for 56, at the Wells Fargo tied for fifth at RBC ninth at the masters, um, 74th of the players that think that was a difficult weekend for him. He's going to make the cut. He's going to make it interesting. If you're telling me he can't, I think he can win. I mean, I'm not even touting like the top 10. I would just pick him outright. I think that I, I think that that's a fine pick. Um, he just he's just a good golfer, and it's just, those are stupid odds. Love the guy it. should be fifty to one. 
like always. Um, but a lot of these guys aren't getting respect. So anyone else you want to shout out, Nate? Uh, or no. Elizabeth? So I've got one shout out and that's Mark Hubbard, who is a Colorado native, went to high school with him. Um, he is great when he shows up. I know that he um, has been hovering in the top 10 here and there. Um, he's gotten very close to winning on tour a couple times um, and is coming second, unfortunately, three times. But um, yeah, he's one that I just want to shout out from a Cardo standpoint. Yeah. 500 to one. Mark Hubbard. If you like Mark Hubbard, 500 to one. That's nice. Um, okay. So we want to thank everyone for, oh my God, I almost forgot. Uh, where in the world is Wyndham Clark? Our most important segment. Um, Elizabeth Wyndham Clark is my favorite golfer. And uh, the only week that he's ever won. I Another failed to Colorado pick him. guy. Born in yeah. Denver. Another That's Colorado right. guy. I was going to say, I actually know him pretty well. So yeah. You know him? I do. What's he like? He's great. He's awesome. Uh, he's such a great guy. I know. I just made like, you know, every dream come true for you. Uh, you have. No, he's, he's a great guy. Um, he's got a great family. Um, and yeah, it, he's, he's one that I've rooted for and I'm, I'm so happy to see him get his first win. Um, I, I knew that it was going to come. It was just a matter of time, but, um, he's one that has been grinding away. And I, I think I respect him the most for everything that he has done just from a mental standpoint, from a physical standpoint, like he hasn't given up when it would be very easy for him, especially the past two years, just to toss in the towel and say, Hey, I'm done. Um, so I think he's an inspiration to all of us because, you know, if you can keep grinding away and then it happens, it, it shows that your effort is worth it. Look, I've been grinding with him. I mean, I have felt every up and down on the Wyndham train for years. And he's been playing so spectacular this year. And I feel like I was one of the first to start um, really talking about that. I may not have been, but I do feel like I was. I mean, I just talk about him all the time. I love the guy. Um, I love his golf game. I like watching him play golf. So tell him uh, you met his absolutely his biggest fan. I am 100% certain that I am Wyndham Clark's biggest fan at, in, love it. In, in golf. Um, so you can tell absolutely him. love it. Well, then I'm going to make yeah. you super jealous and tell you that I have played golf with him. So, oh my God. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. This is no. Really so that's terrible. also, I've seen it first, you know, firsthand in regards to his golf game. And uh, I'm super proud of him, not only for him to represent the state of Colorado, but also for him to, to get it done that way. That's awesome. Um, what was that like? It was amazing. Um, I, I think I took more videos of his swing than anything else. Um, I was like, just wow. I, I just kept saying, wow, like, wow. It was, it was awesome. Um, and it was a, a private course in uh, Arizona that um, we had the opportunity to get on. And it was just, it was crazy watching him play. And I mean, he just made everything look super easy. Um, he did help me with my short game, which was awesome because um, he made it simple and I'm like, Oh, is this what you do? You just break it down and make it super easy and super simple. Um, is that how you become good at golf? And he's like, yeah, pretty much. So it was awesome. Do you mind sharing with us what he told you? Yeah. So, um, he told me really to make sure that I'm accelerating through the ball. Cause, um, I, you know, I stop mid, like once I hit the ball, I just don't keep going. So it's very choppy in regards to my chips or it was at that point, my game has changed a lot. Um, since I played with him, but, um, but yeah, he said just to keep making sure that you're focused on the back of the ball and swing through it, like with consistent tempo, instead of, um, chopping at it. Incredible age advice. If right? Wyndham Clark, if Wyndham Clark told me to accelerate, like the, the golf club would be leaving my hands. <laughs> at, yeah. Like, like, I mean, it would be flying into the trees every time I tried to hit it. I'd be like, oh my God, I got to accelerate. It just, poof, there we go. Um, this is, this has been the best where in the world is Wyndham Clark segment I've ever done in my short career here. Um, he's teeing off at 6 22 AM on Thursday. So that's where he is. He's at the PGA championship. Uh, that was supposed to be a short segment, but turned into the greatest seven minutes of my life. So, um, thank you, uh, Elizabeth for, <laughs> For making I'm glad that, I can uh, make that happen. Come true. <laughs> glad I can make that happen. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, if you don't, if you're not a Wyndham Clark fan, you need to be. 
Um, okay, so thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Clubhouse Picks brought to you by Godzilla Wins. You can download and listen to Clubhouse Picks on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Please be sure to download, rate, and review if you like the show. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. We will see you next week after the PGA for uh, Nate. What's the tournament next week? We are going back to Texas for the God. I just looked it up for the on, uh, Charles Schwab challenge in Fort Worth. Okay. Absolutely. Charles Schwab. Um, terrific. So thanks everyone for listening. Thank you, Elizabeth, for coming on the show with us. We had a lot of fun. Really appreciate uh, you. And we hope to have you back sometime. Yes. Thanks for having me. It's all right. Happy golfing guys.